So I'm going to talk about our platform, uh, Yours, also called Yours.org. Uh, but the title is Making Bitcoin Cash Mainstream because we think about this, you know, one of the ways to think about the project that we're building is basically making a mainstream user-friendly interface to the blockchain or Bitcoin Cash. And we're trying to reach a mainstream audience. We're trying to make this technology uh, useful to normal people who aren't technical, uh, people that are familiar with social media, people that know how to use Snapchat, uh, but they don't necessarily know how to run a miner. Um, so that's sort of our interest. So uh, let's, let's start here. So because this is a Bitcoin Cash conference, I'm going to frame it all in terms of uh, you know, basically what we're doing with Bitcoin Cash and how we're making Bitcoin Cash mainstream specifically. Um, <clears throat> So, look, this conference is called Satoshi's Vision. Uh, I've been involved in the Bitcoin industry for a long time. And Bitcoin Cash has all the properties that Bitcoin is supposed to have. Uh, it's sound, permissionless, scalable, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash with low fees, instant transfers, and Turing complete smart contracts. Woo! Wow. So let me dive into this a little bit and explain what e each of these terms mean, because some of these might even be controversial. Uh, so it's sound, of course, we know that there's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin cash. Uh, no one can cheat and inflate it away. It's permissionless. No one can stop you from using it. You can do whatever you want to do in accordance with uh, the protocol rules. It's scalable. Uh, we do know how we can scale this to reach a global audience. That's possible. Uh, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, you can send money you know, to anyone okay, directly with no third party. It's electronic cash. It's, it's money. You, know, you can hold it. You can transmit it. It has low fees. Uh, in our case, or, well, it, I mean, for any Bitcoin cash transaction, but it's especially noticeable in our case, fees are less than a cent most of the time. Uh, instant transfers, because especially if you're sending smaller values, zero conf works just fine. And Turing complete smart contracts. This is kind of the controversial part. I won't get into this in my talk, but my co-founder Clement is going to talk about this on Sunday. So all this stuff is really amazing, but these are all really technical things. So how do we bring this incredible value to normal people? Um, so we think about it, you know, so one question people have asked since the early days of Bitcoin is what's the killer app? You know, or we're, we're sort of missing something that by itself sort of goes viral, some application of Bitcoin uh, that, uh, you know, goes to a, 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 you know, to a mainstream audience, something that's, you know, the app that introduces everybody to, uh, to Bitcoin Cash. Um, so that's Bitcoin Cash. Now let, let me talk about sort of the problem we're looking at and how and why we're using Bitcoin Cash. So on the internet today, we have a couple of related problems. Uh, first of all, uh, on most social media networks, uh, people, the, the users don't earn money, okay? Uh, you create content on Reddit. We look to Reddit as a role model, but we look to all social media networks, you know, Facebook, uh, Medium, SoundCloud, and so on. Uh, usually they either don't have a way for people to earn money for creating content, or they don't have very good ways. It's all based on ads, and ads only work for like some of the users. Um, but also, not just the creators, what about everybody else? The moderators, the editors, and, and so on. People that curate good content. We want to create mechanisms for those people to earn money. The second problem is, why is there so much low quality content on the internet? And I'll start with trolling, because many of us in the Bitcoin community have probably seen or experienced hopefully not done the trolling uh, in, uh, in you know, Twitter, especially Reddit, and so on. Uh, there's also things like you know, just outright false information. There's lots of propaganda and censorships, things of the sort, uh, clickbait, spam, and so on. Of course, there's also really good content, but there's a lot of low quality, too. So how do we, how do we make this better? And so our solution is basically... We think that if you build payments in, that we can solve a lot of these problems. So first of all, uh, if you build payments into the infrastructure of a social media app, uh, you make it possible for people to earn money for doing anything on the app. You can make it possible for people to earn money for creating content, for curating content, for moderating content, and so on. Uh, secondly, we think that if you set up the incentives correctly, we can encourage high quality content. If you earn more money for creating better content, well, you're encouraged to do so. So we think this will improve the quality of content if we do a good job designing the incentives. Uh, or in other words, ad suck, let's use Bitcoin Cash instead. And what this means is if you think through what these problems are and why they are this way, it has something to do with ads. Like the fact that 
you know, when you create or consume content on Facebook, for instance, why are these third-party advertisers involved at all? Like, why are, why are you, you know, why do you have to look at these ads? Uh, why are these unrelated parties involved in funding the content? Uh, and how come you're not earning the money? I mean, if you're creating all the value, how come advertisers are paying Facebook for that? There's something wrong here. There's something wrong with the sort of the, the ubiquitousness of ads on the internet. Uh, and we think we can solve a lot of these problems with, uh, with Bitcoin Cash. So uh, yours.org, this is the, the app that we, we created. Uh, it is a social media destination with Bitcoin Cash monetization for creating and curating good content. I'll get into this in a minute, what this means exactly, because it, it won't be obvious. But we get compared to Reddit a lot because we have a vote button. Uh, with the difference is that actually the vote button is money. So the voting costs 25 cents. I'll get into how that works in a minute, but you can start getting the idea for what it is that we've built, uh, that it's a social media app with built-in payments. So I, I'm going to start with this one. Uh, this is my favorite feature. Uh, it's my favorite because it's fun to talk about and it's a fun sort of thought experiment, although I admit it's not the most widely used of our features. But I mentioned trolling earlier. Uh, it's interesting that on most social networks, uh, you usually have the ability to add comments. Sometimes you have the ability to turn them off. But you don't have the ability to charge money. So on YouTube, for instance, uh, YouTube lets you allow comments or disallow them. In other words, it's either free or it's infinitely expensive, but there's nothing in between. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just charge some amount of money for people to write a comment? So on YouTube or on Twitter or wherever, wouldn't it be, I mean, like imagine you get trolled, which again, many of us have experienced this. Wouldn't it be interesting if you could just charge people a dollar to write a comment on your article or your tweet or whatever? Uh, I bet that would discourage trolling because the trolls would realize that it's actually costing them money and so they're going to run out if they keep doing that. Uh, we're also very interested in creating mechanisms for people to earn money for all this stuff so that any time that you spend money on something, you can, you can earn it back again. So another feature is, this one's, this one's just kind of cool. We've seen this one used in our app. We have tipping built into comments. So as you can think of it like Tipperbot, uh, people have probably used that one, uh, but sort of built into the app. So you can tip comments directly. You see it when you tip something, you see a little face and the amount of money that you tipped. You can see the total amount of money the commenter earned. So this makes cool things possible, like you could ask a question in your article and say, I will pay you $5 for the answer, and then someone answers it, and you can pay them, and you provably pay them built into the app. So this makes just interesting, interesting things possible. Um, we also have something we call the voting model. So we saw the vote button earlier. The way voting works is it's 25 cents to vote on content. The idea is that by voting, you're curating. You're helping send a signal to other people that this is high quality. It costs 25 cents, and that 25 cents is distributed evenly to all earlier voters. Or if you're the first voter, it goes to the content creator. They get, a, they get the first vote for free. So this makes it possible to earn money for curating content. So you've got to sort of buy in. You've got to pay 25 cents to vote on content. But imagine you're the first voter, and a bunch of people vote after you. You earn money from each subsequent vote. So if you're good at curating content, you vote on hot content early, you can profit from that. Um, and finally, we have a paywall. And the paywall is, it's probably poorly named. We need to come up with a better name because people are always turned off by paywalls. But our paywall is a little bit different than what you see on you know, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, or something like that. Our paywall is actually literally just a paywall where the author sets the price for something behind the paywall. Newspapers have subscription walls. When you go to the Wall Street Journal and you're not signed up yet, they say something like, well, please, you know, before you can read the rest of this article, please sign up for $25 a month or whatever it is. But wouldn't it be cool if you could just pay like a one-off fee to read the article? Like maybe the author could just set a price. That's how our paywall works. It's like the obvious, simplest way to monetize something on the internet is just charge whatever for it. So we let the author set the price. They can set anything as low as one cent, as high as $10, or higher than $10. could be anything. We've actually had people charge hundreds of dollars uh, for content on, on the app. And yes, people have actually paid for that. I'll get to some of that later. Um, so, so you get the idea. Um, we are a social network with built-in payments. And actually, it's really cool. Once you have that working, you can do all these different things that actually many of these things have never even been tried before. Uh, we're not aware of a working version of the paid comments ever in existence, to the best of our knowledge. 
Uh, even the paywall, it's actually really hard to find examples where people actually literally just had a button you could press to make a payment to somebody. There have been a few really minor experiments, and, and no one has really tried it in a serious way. Certainly, the voting model, we're not aware of that. And we have a bunch of other ideas, and it's fun to brainstorm all the other things you can do. In fact, I could just give you one other idea. Um, we'll eventually add a referral system to the platform. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you could earn money for sharing content to people because you get a portion of the revenue generated from people that click through and then buy or vote or whatever it is after that. So it's fun to experiment. There's, there's a giant world of possibilities here, new ways to monetize not just creating content, but also curating and discovering and moderating content, things of that sort, that have never been tried that are only possible when you have really low cost transactions. Um, so anyway, so why Bitcoin Cash? So there are sort of two ways to look at what we're doing. Uh, we're taking Bitcoin Cash and trying to bring it to a mainstream audience, or we're trying to solve these problems, like improving the quality of content on the internet, getting people paid. They go hand in hand. Why do we use Bitcoin Cash specifically? So the best way for me to explain this, I'm just going to give a brief overview of like sort of our history and how we got to this situation. Because often when I, when I talk with sort of new people, uh, a lot of people have no idea what Bitcoin Cash is, and if they look it up on the internet, they, they get a lot of negative uh, you know, information. Like they'll see, you know, I won't go into it actually, I'm not gonna use any of the words they use, but you know what I mean if you Google it, you, whatever you see it on Twitter, you see a bunch of negative information about Bitcoin Cash. Um, but let me just tell you briefly how we got here and why Bitcoin Cash is the right tool for what we're trying to do. Um, Way back in the day, a little more than two years ago, we started on Bitcoin. We were using Bitcoin because, well, two plus years ago, Bitcoin was like 95% market dominance in cryptocurrencies, had by far the largest economy. There was no reason to use anything else. Uh, all we needed was peer-to-peer -peer payments in the app. We need peer-to-peer -peer because we don't want to be a money transmitter. Bitcoin made that possible. The only problem was fees were kind of high in early 2016 at about five cents per transaction. Now, five cents at the time seemed high because fees used to be really low. It was like zero, basically. Uh, so at five cents, we thought, well, we need to lower fees because the payments might only be about five cents. And so a five cent fee on a five cent transaction is awfully high. So my co-founder and I, Clemens, who's in the audience probably somewhere here, uh, we spent, uh, I see him in the back there, uh, we started developing a payment channel technology similar to the Lightning Network. So we, you know, by that point, Lightning Network had been sort of theorized, hadn't been put in production or anything like that. But the basic ideas were out there, and there's Lightning Network and a few other uh, sort of uh, 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 papers and whatnot about how to do this stuff. So we researched and developed this. It took about a year to get a prototype of this working, uh, which we announced in early 2017. But by that time, fees on Bitcoin weren't five cents anymore, they were five dollars. And actually, in order to open a payment channel, you have to broadcast about three transactions, which means that $5 transaction fees, it costs about $15 uh, for someone to open a payment channel. Not to mention you have to actually fund the channels with something. And with fees that high, you've got to fund it with quite a lot more than $15 for it to make sense. So Bitcoin just stopped working for our use case. And I'm not going to go in. There's just simply no time. I'm sure many of the audience is familiar with this, but many probably aren't. But unfortunately, we just couldn't use Bitcoin anymore. So we switched to Litecoin. Uh, Litecoin was technically very similar to Bitcoin. It was easy to switch to. All of our technology worked on it, and the fees were a lot lower. Um, but Litecoin's long-term roadmap was not encouraging. Litecoin also has a fixed maximum block size, and even though its fees were low, the developer and, and sort of ecosystem around Litecoin was pursuing the same type of long-term roadmap as Bitcoin Core, uh, which meant that uh, basically if it ever got popular, we're going to have the same problem again. So we weren't very encouraged by that, and we watched Bitcoin Cash very, very eagerly because we knew that Bitcoin Cash was solving the problem that really needed to be solved, which was how do we just raise the maximum block size you know, safely in a way that just scales to a larger transaction volume. And when Bitcoin Cash launched in early August, uh, it was August 1st, 20, you know, last year, 2017, uh, we started running tests on Bitcoin Cash, and the fees were less than one cent, and we were obviously very encouraged by the community, all, you know, many of us in this, in this room, about what the plan is moving forward, where the plan is we're going to keep raising the maximum block size as needed, and we're going to solve all the technical problems uh, you know, that we need to solve to be able to scale on-chain. So in a nutshell, 
So anyway, so we switched to Bitcoin Cash. Fees are really low. We, we ended up archiving our payment channel technology. So even after, at that point, about a year and a half developing the routed payment channel technology, we actually archived all of that code and we just used simple on-chain Bitcoin Cash transactions. Because the fees are so low, we don't need payment channels. And furthermore, the usability of on-chain Bitcoin transactions uh, is way better than payment channels. And I have uh, a couple of articles, a couple of videos where I talk about this extensively, about why the, the, uh, the usability is better. I'll just give you one brief example. On Lightning Network or any of these payment channel technologies, the recipient of funds has to be online, which is a really difficult thing to work around if like, they're not online, which is true in a social media app, which you don't literally have open 24-7. So anyway, in a nutshell, uh, Bitcoin Cash works today and has the best chance to keep working tomorrow, and that's why we're using Bitcoin Cash. Um, so we think the, the way to make Bitcoin Cash mainstream is to make it really easy for anyone anywhere in the world to earn money for working in the global economy on the internet. And that's exactly what we're doing in our app. You can create value in our app. You can create content. You can curate content and so on. And you can earn money. And the payments can be from anybody anywhere in the world. And that's amazing. Like, you can be a part of the global economy, you can, doesn't matter where you live or whatever, you can create value and you can earn money from that. And we think this is how we bring Bitcoin Cash to a mainstream global audience. We think it's the most basic use case. Smart contracts are awesome, we'll get to that later. Let's just make it possible for people to earn money really easily. So I'm gonna run through here, I don't know if I'm gonna get cut off on time. How many, five minutes? Okay, what I'm gonna do is, since I only have five minutes left, um, I'm just gonna cover a couple of these and then we'll leave it for, uh, for questions. So I was going to run through tons of examples of how people have used our platform. Uh, so just for instance, um, our first popular article was called Bitcoin Cash Investment Thesis by a guy named uh, Bitcoin Optimist. And this article earned $86. So this was, I forget the timing of this exactly, but this was the first article on our platform where someone earned enough money from it that actually maybe that was worth his time to write the article. So this was like, you know, this was like a proof of concept that, oh, the thing actually does basically work. It's no longer really theoretical. And I'm just going to jump ahead to the, the next uh, great example, which was we have a user named Rivers and Mountains who not only, like, was it worth his time to write the articles, he actually earned quite a lot of money. He earned about $500 per article because what he would do is he would write a free article about Bitcoin Cash, that was actually a really good, interesting article. And so people would share it because it's just a good free article. But then he placed an $8 paywall, and behind the paywall was trading tips about how to trade Bitcoin Cash. And so, but you read the article, and like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. Oh, $8, but gosh, if I like buy in you know, at the right time, I'm going to earn way more than $8. So he actually earned like $500 per article. He earned several thousand dollars, something like $5,000 total. Uh, for all of his articles. So that's just, it, I'm out of time, so I'm not going to go through the rest. I'm just going to blast through. You can see there are a bunch of them there. Um, but there are all sorts of interesting things people have used our platform for because we've set something up that like, was, didn't really previously exist. It's just a social app with content and built-in payments. You can just easily pay people for stuff and see it on the app. There's a lot of use cases for this. So anyway, we're sort of out of time. Uh, I don't know how, many, how much time we have left and whether we have time for questions. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give you some questions because that okay. was awesome. Yeah. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, I'll go. I'll just go. Yeah, I can. I can tap one per ten seconds or something. Okay. I'll just. I'll leave this one up here for now. Yes. So, Mike, uh, once you develop a social network that lets people get paid, yes. and you start to create this platform that anyone can use to earn money on the internet, um, based on the the current social climate, it seems like one of the first things that's going to happen that you're going to receive are demands from various parties that you start deplatforming various users for various reasons. Do you have a plan for dealing with that? I'm not sure I understand deplatforming. Just saying that certain people should not be allowed to publish on the internet because some people don't like what they're saying. Well, so our, you know, if you're talking about sort of censorship as a, as a general concept here, so we recognize that, uh, you know, uh, we think probably that actually one of the biggest use cases for our platform right now 
is to be anti-censorship because, we, sorry, yes, anti-censorship because we can see, oh, thank you, thank you, all right. I, I should have started with that, I guess, but, but uh, you know, look, we see a lot of censorship on social media right now. It's like actually really interesting that a lot of like voices are being silenced on social media. That's a real problem. And that's actually, I think, the biggest problem. And it, this is very much related to earning money. Because what's happening on YouTube, for example, a lot of the people that are being silenced, what's actually happening is they're creating compelling content that turns off these third-party advertisers. And so they get shut off from being able to be funded by ads on YouTube. So that is one way voices are being silenced. Well, if the payments are peer-to-peer, -peer, your audience is paying you directly we're not beholden to third-party advertisers. So that problem doesn't exist on our platform. So I think that is probably the biggest use case that's true right now uh, you know, on our platform. So. Another question? Uh, yeah. Hello? Yep. Just a really simple question. Just wondering how does yours.org make money? Uh, yeah, so uh, we take 5% of payments on pieces of content. So this is still an open question, exactly what we're going to do long term. But we think the simplest thing we can do is we allow free transactions, because you can always go to somebody's profile and send them money directly for free. But if you take advantage of our cool features like the paywall, we take 5% of that. So that's our business model for right now. Final question for Ryan. Hi, Charles. Um, have you seen any uh, clever, clever exploits that people have done to abuse uh, yours? Clever exploits, like just in, in terms of how they use it, or you mean like a security yeah, thing? Yeah, I mean, that's sort of, uh, let's see if I can find a cool example here. Uh, I'll start, I'll do this one. I think this is kind of cool. So this is, uh, I'll use his handle because that's what he used on the platform, Singularity, uh, use our platform and a number of others to raise money for what would become the Bitcoin Cash Fund. Uh, and yeah. So this was at the time, so Singularity, so what happened, this is really interesting, so he published this article on our platform and on Reddit and a few other places, and at the time we had like a tipping button that was like, like 10 cents or something like that, and it was just by definition 10 cents, and a number of people like clicked the 10 cents button over and over and over again to give him more money, so we're like, well we should let people type in any amount of money, so we added that feature, so anyway, he earned $200 with our platform itself, and also, I think it, on that day, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, he's probably in the audience, I don't see him right now, but uh, they earned like $15,000 or something like that within a couple days, uh, both on our platform and a number of others, uh, but not via the platform specifically. So, so anyway, we, this was a cool use case that we then realized, oh, let's make that easier for people to crowdfund on our platform in the future. And that is our presentation for today from Ryan on yours. Thank you. Please give Ryan a great hand. And congratulations on yours. Well done.